The principles of true hip hop have been forsaken. It's all contractual and about money making. A Grammy winning hip hop act with live instrumentation that incorporates elements of jazz, classic soul, old school rap, and rock. The Roots are responsible for some of the most progressive albums of the last few decades. The co founder of the band was Tariq Trotter and he was known as the most brilliant lyricist of all time. Coupled with powerful live performances, Tariq's overpowering presence made the crowd go wild. However, like many shining stars, Tariq faced many tragedies that wanted his illustrious legacy for good. Sad news for the music community today, as we have to report to you that Malik B, rapper and founding member of The Roots, has passed away at the age of 47. Let's delve into the nitty gritty details of the life of Black Thought that has rocked the entertainment industry for decades. Black Thought, also known as Tariq Trotter, has undoubtedly made a significant impact on the world of hip-hop throughout his career. Despite being celebrated by many music enthusiasts, there is a recurring sentiment that his greatness is often underappreciated or overlooked by a wider audience. With over three decades of experience in the industry and numerous impressive releases under his belt, it's no surprise that each time a new electrifying freestyle or exceptional performance emerges, it reignites discussions among rap fans about Black Thought's talent and and his deserving place among the greatest of all time. The Roots, a renowned hip-hop group hailing from Philadelphia, has indeed faced their fair share of challenges and hardships on their path to fame. The core members of the group, including founders Questlove on drums and Black Thought as the main MC, have experienced difficult life circumstances marked by sadness, violence, and personal tragedies. The founding vocalist and rapper of The Roots, Tariq, experienced a tragic incident during his childhood. At the age of six, Trotter accidentally burned down his house. He used to play with green plastic army men and would melt parts of their bodies with a lighter to simulate wounds as they fought each other. On this particular occasion, the lighter grew hotter than usual, causing Trotter to suffer a quick burn. Instinctively, he threw the lighter across the room, but the flame was still active and ignited the curtains, resulting in a fire. Thankfully for Trotter, his 14-year-old brother Keith and their mother's boyfriend were able to escape the house safely while firefighters extinguished the blaze. Much of the home and possessions inside it were lost, and it had left lasting psychological effects on Trotter. Essentially, it's about, you know, putting those parts of our of our of ourselves, of our of our past. You know what I'm saying? That are no longer going to serve us or are no longer going to serve us in the same way. Trotter revealed in his memoir that he was never blamed for the incident. He said, quote, No one ever blamed me. My mother offered enormous grace, knowing that I was just a child. But once you've burned down your home, everything else is small in comparison. That experience of total loss became the basis of all that I am. However, when Tariq and his family returned to their burned home after the fire had been extinguished, Trotter's teenage brother noticed some unusual things. Keith accused a few of the firefighters of stealing jewelry and smashing framed family pictures on the door. He also claimed that some of the firefighters had damaged furniture that had no fire damage. Later on, Keith confronted the firefighters about these allegations, but one firefighter threatened Keith and another physically attacked him. In the end, Tariq's brother was taken away by the police, Trotter told the New York Times. Quote, the fire had been extinguished, but my brother had accused a few of the firemen of pocketing some jewelry and smashing some framed family pictures on the floor. My brother also said some of the firemen had destroyed some furniture that had no fire damage at all. One of the firemen got in my brother's face and threatened him, and another swung on my brother. Having his house burnt down and his brother arrested changes Tariq's perspective for good. He said, quote, that day was a turning point not just for me, not just for my family because of the fire, but that was the day my brother was arrested arrested for the first time. He has been in and out of jail ever since. Black Thought channeled his frustrated reactions into creativity. Many of you might not know, but he started rapping at age 9 and won admission to Philadelphia's prestigious high school for the creative and performing arts. At first, he studied visual arts and thought about becoming an architect. The rapper showed an instinct for commercial success from the start. During his formative years, he made African medallions and sold them for $10 each to his fellow students. Unsurprisingly, Trotter had disciplinary run-ins at Kappa, starting on his first day with an incident in which he was said to have been caught in a bathroom with a senior girl dance student, and he was eventually expelled. 
In an interview with Philly Voice, he said, quote, The justice system in Philadelphia and the state of Pennsylvania was never on my side. I grew up cognizant of certain dangers, one being the ever-present possibility of the risk of arrest, but that hasn't changed. All of the stuff I was concerned about living in Philadelphia when I was a young person, to my young son, my young nephew, my young relatives, and family member who's on the streets of Philadelphia right now, they need to be concerned about the same stuff. During his high school era, Tariq was more than just a troublemaker. He was buried deep in the back alley substance business. It got so serious that Tariq once thought that he would not be able to make it to adulthood. In an interview with NPR, he expressed, quote, Lots of us didn't think we would see ourselves making it past 25 or 30, just because we didn't know that many people who had. The drug epidemic in the 80s took a whole generation of people out. It was also during those devastating years when he experienced one of the biggest tragedies of his life, the death of his mother. Trotter's mother, Cassandra Trotter, had gone missing and her family feared the worst due to her history of substance use. They eventually located her body after contacting hospitals, police stations, and morgues in Philadelphia. Tariq admitted in an interview, quote, An unidentified black woman matching my mother's description had been admitted to the morgue. Dental records confirmed it was my mother. In the aftermath, his friend and creative partner, Amir Questlove Thompson, became an anchor. Tariq told NPR, quote, Music was there for me when I needed it to be, and Amir and his family was there for me. I was very much at a crossroads. I could have processed that trauma and the experience in the loss in a different way, and just been at a very different place today. My parents weren't into cooking that much, my grandmother a little bit, but I started working in restaurants, like, you know, before I should have. In his new memoir, The Upcycled Self, Trotter reflected on his childhood, his decades-long friendship with Thompson, and his life as a musician and artist. Quote, We had a brief sort of scuffle, kerfuffle, a little 30-second altercation when we were young and just starting out. We were displaced, living in London, and there was just lots of angst and anxiety, with all the energy associated with anyone's first time putting out a record. So yeah, just the perfect storm of events. It led to us coming to blows right quick, and it was the sort of thing that I'd forgotten about before we left the place where it had taken place. But I think that's the sort of thing that it stuck with him in a different way. Is it a grudge that he's held? I don't think so, but I definitely don't think it's something that he has ever forgotten. Aside from that, in 1987, the pair formed a duo called the Square Roots and took their drum and rap act to clubs and talent shows. Not needing electronics, they were also free to take their act to the corner of 5th Street at Pass Yonk Avenue in downtown Philadelphia, and in the summer of 1992, they earned some $4,000 in tips. The Square Roots, a Philadelphia-based musical group, eventually transformed into The Roots. During this transition, they added new members such as bassist Leonard Nelson Hubbard, rapper Malik Abdul-Basit, and beatboxer Roselle. The group gained recognition for their live instrumental approach to hip-hop music, deviating from the prevalent electronic sound. First of all, let's talk about these ill capers and fly and that now. In 1993, The Roots experienced a significant breakthrough. They received an invitation to perform at a festival in Germany, which led to the recording of their debut album Organics. The exposure gained from their performance and the album's release resulted in a European tour. The positive reception of their music reached the United States, leading to a record deal with the DGC Geffen label. A year later, they released their second album, Do You Want More? What if you could just, just blink yourself away? The band garnered attention and acclaim for their distinctive approach to hip-hop music. They stood out by utilizing live instruments instead of relying heavily on digital sampling, which was a common element in hip-hop at the time. Their music appealed to a wide range of audiences, including both urban and modern rock listeners. Although Questlove, the group's drummer, often represented the public face of the band, it was Black Thought who primarily provided the lyrical content. Following the departure of Malik B, Black became the main lyricist for the group. His rap verses showcased his background in the street and club battle performances, featuring both self-assured boasting and elements of social critique. He aimed to challenge the materialistic and misogynistic tendencies prevalent in other hip-hop acts. I'm sorry for your loss, it's somebody dead in the car and it's probably one of yours. The writing all across Indeed, Black Thought's continuing development as a wordsmith was partly responsible for the ongoing success of The Roots long after most of their hip-hop contemporaries had disappeared from the scene. The Roots returned with the tipping point and game theory ranging ever more widely in their subject matter. Black's more serious attitude, Questlove told Peter Rubin of XXL Magazine, was the key to game theory. 
Quote, mostly this is Tariq's ongoing evolution. Once you've mastered battling about your MC prowess, what do you do? I think Tariq has come to grips with his life. I slowly see him starting to open himself more and more and more. While the roots wrote on Tariq's talent, he was still facing tribulations in his daily life. He lost one of his longtime friends very young. Trotter confirmed his friend's passing in a written statement. Quote, it is with heavy hearts and tearful eyes that we regretfully inform you of the passing of our beloved brother and longtime Roots member Malik Abdul Basit. May he be remembered for his devotion to Islam, his loving brotherhood, and his innovation as one of the most gifted MCs of all time. Malik B. first met Roots co-founders Thompson and Tariq while attending Millersville University in rural Pennsylvania in the early 90s. Malik B. was a rapper who contributed significantly to the early success of the Roots. He prominently featured on their first album, Organics, and continued to collaborate with the group on subsequent albums, including their breakthrough and Grammy-nominated album, Things Fall Apart. However, Malik B. eventually decided to leave the group after Things Fall Apart. The reasons for his departure were hinted at in the lyrics of the track Water, The First Movement, and Phrenology. The lyrics alluded to Abdul Basit's struggles with substance use and his absence from touring dates. One to make a scream, two to make a sound, roots crew from Billy come to rock the house. Over the course of the group's career, Black suffered the loss of another friend named James Davis. While he was still attending high school in the 1990s, Carl Jenkins, better known as Dice Raw, joined the extended musical universe of The Roots, contributing hard-edged raps that complement the more diffuse style of Black Thought. Jenkins almost always contributes a guest verse to a song or two on any Roots album, including Rhymes and Ammo. To this day, Jenkins maintains an active solo career where he collaborates with many non-Roots musicians, including Philadelphia rapper James Davis IV, who performed under the name Jimmy Wall Street. However, that afternoon of June 2013, Davis exited his mother's home in East Germantown. He was gunned down. Suffering a wound to the groin, Davis was taken to Einstein Medical Center and was pronounced dead less than 40 minutes later. The rapper was only 34 years old. Weeks later, Jenkins released the album Jimmy's Back as a way to pay tribute to his friend. In an interview with Complex, Dice said, quote, Jimmy was all about positivity. It's a tragedy that his life had to play out this way. I wanted to dedicate this album to him in the hopes of changing some perspectives and saving some lives. But this was just the tip of the iceberg. You see, Trotter also had to come to terms with another longtime friend's death. Leonard Hubbard, also known as Hub, was a crucial member of The Roots, joining the group in its early days as The Square Roots in Philadelphia in 1992. He became the bass player for the band after spontaneously jamming with the other members at a coffee shop gig. Hub remained with the group throughout their career, contributing to every album they released, including their 2006 album Game Theory. Unfortunately, Hub had to leave the roots a year later due to health issues. His wife Stephanie revealed to the Philadelphia Inquirer that he had been diagnosed with multiple myeloma, a form of blood cancer. Despite undergoing treatment, his cancer went into remission for 14 years. He later lost his life to the disease. Malik B., a founding member of the music group The Roots, has died at the age of 47. Hub died with a lawsuit against his former bandmates unsettled. The lawsuit alleged that the surviving and active members of The Roots cheated Hubbard out of a fortune potentially worth millions. In the 1990s, The Roots formed multiple corporations to handle their business affairs, recording and publishing deals and touring revenues. Hubbard was granted shares in those agreements with percentages of 17, 25, and 33 percent respectively. The lawsuit claimed that through arrangements with outside corporations, crimes amounting to racketeering were committed and Hubbard was systematically denied his share of the Roots profit. With all the bad luck attached, Ben Kenny also left the experimental hip-hop oriented band The Roots after a three-year stint. His work can be heard on their album Phrenology. Instead, Kenny joined the alternative rock band Incubus as their new bass he remained a regular member of Incubus and other musical projects for over two decades. However, in January this year, Kenny announced on his Instagram page that he would be taking an indefinite break from recording and performing music, as well as from social media. He cited medical reasons as the cause for his decision. He said, Unfortunately, last year I found out I had a brain tumor. As soon as I got home from tour, I had a successful operation to have it removed. A veteran session musician, sideman, and former member of Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings, Ian Hendrickson Smith's saxophone has graced dozens of jazz and pop recordings. Oh, 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 yeah. 
Hendricks and Smith joined the Roots just before the group became the in-studio band on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. Hendricks and Smith was good friends and collaborators with acclaimed modern jazz drummer Lawrence Low Leathers. In June 2019, that musician was standing in a hall inside of an apartment building in the Mott Haven area of the Bronx in New York City. While arguing with his girlfriend, a third party attacked Leathers, coming up behind him and placing him under a chokehold. Leathers couldn't breathe, quickly passed out, never regained consciousness, and was pronounced dead at the scene. A few months later, Hendrickson Smith and fellow saxophonist Corey Weeds collaborated on the jazz album The Lowdown, named for Leathers' nickname in tribute. The Roots aren't just a traditional band, more of an artistic collective with a frequently changing lineup featuring guests and collaborators. In the early 1990s, British jazz musician Nicky Yao performed with The Roots, primarily playing piano and keyboards during its early live shows. Yao's musical development benefited greatly from mentorships. After studying for six years under United Kingdom-based jazz trumpeter Ian Carr, she was spotted playing a London club show by experimental and foundational American jazz singer Betty Carter. Nikki told Jazzwise in 2021, recalling the moment when she got to spontaneously perform with the vocalist, quote, another very special experience was when Betty Carter was at the club, and straight afterwards she said, quote, you must come to New York. So I was all set to go to America to learn from her, but sadly she died on the very day I left. For a while I kept thinking, what if? To add to that, many of you might not know that Scott Storch, known primarily as a producer, had a successful career in the 2000s working on hit singles for major R&B and hip-hop acts. However, before his success as a producer, Storch was a member of the hip-hop band The Roots. He played keyboards for the group during the 90s when he was a teenager. Storch's work as a producer brought him significant wealth. He had reportedly earned $70 million. However, in the following years, he experienced financial troubles and squandered a large portion of his fortune. He failed to pay real estate taxes in 2006 and 7 and stopped making child support payments in 2008, resulting in lawsuits from the mothers of his children. In addition to his financial woes, Storch's production opportunities declined. He attributed many of his problems to a serious C addiction. After struggling for three years to overcome his addiction, he eventually found a rehabilitation program that worked for him, leading him to achieve sobriety. Apart from all the tragedies, Tariq recently released his memoir, The Upcycled Self, which tells the story of how art and family propelled him from the streets of Philadelphia to become a Grammy Award-winning artist and one of the most prolific MCs of his generation. Throughout the book, he writes candidly about all that was exhilarating and dangerous about growing up in the city, and how his mother, grandparents, and extended family members did their best to save him from succumbing to the streets. Like for me, it was uh, it's, it's, it was it was visual art, which was my gateway, you know, into uh, music, and um, and that's that's what really saved my life. In his memoir, Black Thought thanked his career partner Amir for giving him a chance at life when he didn't want anything to do with it. He said, In Questlove, I saw the person I aspired to be, or maybe who I longed to be on a certain level. He came from what felt like a family that was stable in a different way than mine was, and I had lots of freedom as a young person that Quest hadn't experienced, and so we gave each other an entry into a life that we otherwise wouldn't have experienced. According to Trotter, his book is about working on ourselves, recognizing the pieces of our past but also understanding when to abandon things that no longer serve us. He claimed that The Upcycled Self is meant to be more than a memoir but also a self-help book, and he hopes his story will inspire others to use their past to propel them to something better. Quote, If I'm able to make a difference in anyone's life, if anyone is able to see themselves in my story and there's something for them to latch onto, then I think it's win-win and this book will have served its purpose. Fans all over the world champion Tariq for being the best rapper of all times. Tariq is one of the greatest sages of our time. A man who went through all of that and transmuted it into what he was able to, it's what real G's do. Trauma into triumph. Abuse into abundance. Thank you for being such a good sir. Another added, quote, I've listened to Thought's discography the past few days. Man, this dude is unbelievable. His bars are packed with so much meaning while he's writing these ridiculous multi-syllables and with this ridiculously captivating flow you can't pause to pick apart his lyrics, cause you just got a vibe with it. The definition of a good MC. All in all, Black Thought suffered a lot of death in his career. From his bandmates to acquaintances, he has seen it all. It is important to note that Tariq did not let his career suffer in the wake of all the tragedies. That's it for today. See you at the next one. Goodbye.